Hi, this is David. I'd like to take a quick look at the difference between a swap rate and a spot rate, common source of confusion in fixed income. To do that, I have an assumption here for the swap rate curve. It's suspiciously steep and round. So for example, six month swap rate here is 1.00%. Two year swap rate is 4.00%. And now if you expect the spot rates to be the same, you're not alone. But in fact, if this swap rate curve is upward sloping, then the spot rates are going to be slightly higher. And that goes to the definition of a swap rate. But first, the spot rate, you probably know, is really important in finance. The spot rate is what we use to discount a future cash flow at a particular point in time. So if we have a series of cash flows, what we really want to do in finance is discount those cash flows at the respective spot rates. And the, so the spot rates are directly linked to the discount factors that inform a discount function. So we use the spot rates for pricing or translating future cash flows into present value or prices. The swap rate is different. If we take a look here at an interest rate swap, one counterparty agrees to pay the fixed swap rate in exchange for a floating rate, probably LIBOR. And so here I just start with the simplest example I could think of here, a one-year swap rate of 2%. See, that's right here. One-year swap rate is 2%. The swap rate is really the coupon on the fixed rate bond that's half of this swap. This swap is really a, a fixed rate bond in exchange for a floating rate bond. So here's the key idea. The swap rate is really a par rate it determines the coupon of that bond. So if we have a one-year swap rate of 2%, then if we're, let's say we're going to be either receiving, but let's say we're paying that fixed rate, we're paying 1 million in six months because that's 2% times the notional, but divided by two because it's semi-annual. So 2% times 100 million is 2 million divided by two is 1 million. That's the first cash flow. And then the second and final cash flow is another 1 million plus the notional of 100. So we have two cash flows. How do we price this fixed rate bond? Not with swap rates, but with spot rates. So this first 1 million uses the 1% spot rate. So here's the only time where they're going to match. That's that first cash flow in six months. 1 million discounts to present value of 900, um, 995000 This second cash flow at one year uses the one-year spot rate, which needs to be slightly higher than the 2% swap rate. Because if we discount this cash flow, then we've got two present value cash flows, and the sum of those need to price this bond par. So the swap rate is really a par rate because it's the coupon on this fixed rate bond that prices the bond to par if we use the spot rates. So you can see the 2% really applies to both cash flows, but each of those cash flows use their own spot rate. And for this reason, the spot rate is not equal to the swap rate. Let's try it again, this time with a two-year swap rate, a two-year swap, where the two-year swap rate is 4%. That swap rate, again, is really a par rate so it's the coupon on this bond that prices the bond to par. In other words, the market says if we have a 4% swap rate, then the cash flows will be 2 million, 2 million, 2 million, and finally in two years, 102 million, such that with that swap rate, aka par rate, if we discount each of those cash flows at the respective spot rates, and sum those, then the price of this bond will be a hundred or par. So again, the 4% swap rate is calibrated, or the market determines that is what gives us the cash flows that if we use the spot rates, will price the bond to par. So the 4% really informs the entire series of cash flows, but each of those cash flows accesses it its own a spot rate or is discounted according to its own spot rate. And so for that reason, when we come out here to two years, it's a four-year swap rate, but the spot rate, in order to price this bond to par, actually has to be higher um, if this swap rate 
curve is upward sloping. So I hope that explains the difference between the spot rate, which we use to discount single cash flows at a single point in time in the future, and the swap rate, which is really a par rate.